Hello, my name is Kainton the Genius, and welcome to question 14 of hypothesis testing problems we've been solving. We've solved 13 problems, and today we are going to solve a chi-square problem. Remember, there are three different types of chi-square problems. We have goodness of fit tests, we have tests for independence, and we have tests for homogeneity. This problem is going to be a test for goodness of fit. But take note that sometimes the question is not going to tell you the particular test to carry out just like it is now. I'm just giving it away to you. So let's get started. But just a reminder for you, subscribe to my channel, click on the subscribe button so that when I make new lessons you get notified, you'll be able to follow along. Keep in mind that for you to improve in solving statistics problem, you need to solve problems frequently. So let's take uh, some minutes to solve this together. The question says, can a dice be considered regular, which is showing the following frequency distribution during 100 throws? So that the die was thrown uh, 100 times and we have this okay I think this should be 1000 <coughs> it should be 1000 because it, this is a total of the frequency should give us a, a 1000 not 100 alright so let's go to the solution remember this is a, a procedure I've made and put there for you is in kind of the genius at blogspot a HGO, and you can easily search out question 14 so in this case, the question says to consider whether the dice can be considered regular or consistent. Okay, so we use chi-square goodness of fit to test. Uh, goodness of fit, uh, fit test is used to determine whether a, a, a sample data is consistent with a distribution. So here we are, are going to check whether uh, the dice is regular and now chi-square is going to check if it is consistent. It's about the same thing. So it's chi-square goodness of fit test, all right? So this is the Excel sheet, but try to go through the uh, problem. Try to solve it by yourself first before you go to get the Excel sheet. The formula for chi-square is this. Keep it in mind. Chi-square is equal to the sum of observed value minus expected value for all the uh, samples sorry and then divided by the expected value this sigma is actually sigma that should be on top but let's follow the procedure I think is going to be very clear so the step one state the null and alternate hypothesis the null hypothesis first it says that the data is consistent Alternate hypothesis says the data is not consistent. Remember, the alternate hypothesis is opposite of the null hypothesis. So let's go ahead to use Excel to solve it. And I'm going to open Microsoft Excel right now so that we can start solving it. So try to follow along yourself because that is the only way you can uh, master how to solve problems in Excel. So the first thing you want to do is you transfer the data to Microsoft Excel. So we have categories, we have observation, and we have expected. Okay? So I'm going to tell you how we calculate this expected. So the first thing we are going to do, we have categories, and we have observation. Okay? So so now there are how many categories there there are six of them so one two and then I drag down all the way to six okay so right so let me make this a little bigger I like using 13 as the fonts but maybe today we are going to use 14 is still okay let me just centralize everything right so the obs categories observation so we have one eight two one five four one six two one eight two one five four 
one six two and then the remaining three is what one seven five one five one one seven six one seven five one five one one seven six so this is where we are at this time I like putting borders around my table so that it looks uh, presentable so this is it then I also like doing this little cleanup right so actually it doesn't really matter but it makes your work look neat so I'm going to calculate the mean of the observation okay so you calculate the mean of the observation not the mean of the categories the mean of the observation and then uh, you use a function equal to average equal to average and then you select all of these and press enter okay you can see the average is not typed correctly so so it gives us the average alternatively you can just click where you want the average to appear or in the auto sum just this drop down just click on average and it automatically selects your data press enter to calculate it all right so now i'm going to change the format to display only in three decimal places or two so if you go to format cells if you go to format cells it displays this format cells dialog box go to numbers and just allow it to be in two decimal places alternatively you can also use the toolbar you can see these two places you see number and you see so you can actually increase or decrease the decimal places from here so this completes the first step we've uh, transferred the data to Excel and we've calculated the mean so the next thing we are going to do is to calculate the expected value expected value alright so let's go back to the procedure and see where we are we've created our table now we are calculating the expected value expected value is the same as the mean of the sample which I have calculated as shown in the table right so it's quite easy expected value is simply the mean so let's transfer this data to this place so equal to and then you click on it but if you if you drag down if you drag down you see there will be a problem it doesn't feel so how to solve this you need to use absolute cell reference so that it doesn't change this so to create absolute cell reference just place dollar sign in the letter and also in the number so dollar C and you also say dollar nine so now you have absolute cell reference as you can see and that is so fine I'm going to use this here and then also I want to so, so let's copy this the format here I'm going to copy so uh, no okay okay so let's see where we are sorry I need to just uh, make sure this thing is okay okay so this is where we are at this time so try to be following along in that way you get used to it so we've calculated the expected value and we say the expected value is the same as the mean of the sample which I have calculated this this so the step 4 is calculate the differences and in this step we need to calculate observed value minus expected value that is O minus E for each of the observations so we need to add another column where we are going to simply subtract the observation sorry the expect, expected value from the observed value so let's add it as observed value minus minus expected value All right so it's simply 
O minus E. So equal to O minus E. So this cell minus this cell. So at this point we can easily drag down. Alright? So so where are we? We've completed step four. So also verify that you have the figures correct. The next thing we are going to calculate is the squared differences. It means that we are going to square the 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 observed value minus expected value. We need to square the column. So we need to add another column here. So let's call it O minus minus e uh, raised to power two. Right. So. Let me use this format, copy the format by using Format Painter, and then just leave it there. Okay, so so simply you square this column. So let's create equal to this, raised to power 2. Okay, so now this is what we have. No problem. We need to reduce the decimal point to about 2. So as this, as I mentioned before, you need to use this. Let's see. I think. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So this is what we have. Is now how many decimal places? Two. All right. So let's continue in part two. In part two, we are going to calculate the chi-square statistics and then complete this lesson.